the perils of being a hard-working princess, Beatrice and Eugenie lament having to juggle a job in their royal engagements without a taxpayer-funded salary like Harry and Williams. They belong to a family that is the embodiment of privilege and power, holiday on billionaires' yachts and hang out with A-listers at private members' clubs. So perhaps princesses Beatrice and Eugenie are not the most obvious candidates to elicit public sympathy for their lot in life. Yet in an interview in the current issue of Vogue magazine, sympathy is precisely what the sisters, who are eighth and ninth in line to the throne, appear to expect. Because they are not on the royal roster of official engagements, Anna Mission said to have deeply disappointed their father, the Duke of York, neither is entitled to a taxpayer-funded salary, so they are pursuing careers instead. And, they claim, juggling their royal status with hectic jobs while living in the limelight is tough. It's hard to navigate situations like these because there is no precedent, said Princess Beatrice, the vice president of a technology company who celebrated her 30th birthday this week. Her sister Eugenie, 28, the associate director of an art gallery who is soon to marry fiancé Jack Brooks Bank, added, We are young women trying to build careers and have personal lives, and we're also princesses, and doing all of this in the public eye. So do they have a point or is this just a case of the pity me princesses? Antonia Hoyle presents the evidence. They belong to a family that is the embodiment of privilege and power holiday on billionaires' yachts and hang out with A-listers at private members' clubs. So perhaps princesses Beatrice and Eugenie are not the most obvious candidates to elicit public sympathy for their lot in life. Yet in an interview in the current issue of Vogue magazine, sympathy is precisely what the sisters, who are eighth and ninth in line to the throne, appear to expect. Because they are not on the royal roster of official engagements, Anna Mission said to have deeply disappointed their father, the Duke of York. Neither is entitled to a taxpayer-funded salary, so they are pursuing careers instead. And, they claim, juggling their royal status with hectic jobs while living in the limelight is tough. It's hard to navigate situations like these because there is no precedent, said Princess Beatrice, the vice president of a technology company, who celebrated her 30th birthday this week. Her sister Eugenie, 28, the associate director of an art gallery who is soon to marry fiancé Jack Brooks Bank, added, We are young women trying to build careers and have personal lives, and we're also princesses, and doing all of this in the public eye. So do they have a point or is this just a case of the pity me princesses? Antonia Hoyle presents the evidence. Not just token toffs at work. Too real, as Beatrice described their personalities in Vogue magazine, to just lounge around on spa trips. Both sisters appear determined to work for a living. Art-loving Newcastle University graduate Eugene D. spent two years in New York as a manager for online auction house Paddle 8 before becoming an associate director at London Art Gallery Hauser & Wirth in 2015. Impressive achievements, but don't ever say she gained her position at the tender age of 28 because she is a princess. The reason I am in the art world is down to me, not because I have a title, she has said. Beatrice. Meanwhile, is vice president of partnerships and strategy for the technology company Affinity, in New York, having previously worked as a business development associate at Sony, the Japanese conglomerate. Neither princess's current salary has been disclosed, but given that Eugenie was on £25,000 a year at Paddle 8 and in 2014 Beatrice earned £19,500 a year at Sony, both salaries below the national average. It is safe to assume the corporate world won't necessarily pay over the odds just to have a princess on the payroll. Sisterly support on tap. Although their parents separated when they were just two and four, Beatrice and Eugenie still benefit from a strong family unit. Sarah and Andrew, both 58, remain close, so much so, in fact, that Eugenie once described them as the best divorced couple I know. The Duke has described himself as completely overjoyed at his daughter's engagement, while Sarah has tweeted of her total joy. Both girls are also close to their granny the Queen, and share a deep sibling bond. We are each other's rocks, says Eugenie, who has made Beatrice her maid of honor. We're the only person in each other's lives who can know exactly what the other one is going through. Never-ending ski breaks and sunshine holidays. From idling off of ease and on Roman Abramovich's £300 million yacht to ski breaks at their parents' £13 million Swiss chalet in Verbier, 
which has a swimming pool and six members of staff, the sisters have enjoyed years of luxurious holidays. Between November 2014 and December 2016 they are believed to have taken 25 foreign trips between them. Their holidays have included breaks in Spain, Abu Dhabi, California and the Bahamas, a visit to Sir Richard Branson's Necker Island and, another, sojourn courtesy of Roman Abramovich at his £39 million home in St. Bart's. Eugenie reportedly took 25 days off in the first 10 weeks of one new job, a holiday allowance few would get away with. Eugenie said, My boss is lovely and he understands very much when I want to take an afternoon off or go away with family. Charity work and family values, as well as their full-time day jobs, both young women support several altruistic endeavors. Having had dyslexia diagnosed when she was seven, Beatrice aligns herself with youth-orientated educational organizations such as the Be Cool, Be Nice campaign against cyberbullying. Eugenie, who was born with scoliosis, curvature of the spine, for which she had surgery at the Royal National Orthopedic Hospital at the age of 12, now promotes the hospital's redevelopment appeal. Actively involved in the charities of which they are patrons, a total of 17 between them, according to their father's website. They attend events and fundraisers after work most evenings, which can mean struggling with chaotic schedules. Perhaps this drive to do good reflects the fact that their presence at official royal functions is rarely required. Beatrice was said to be disappointed that her offer to help during the Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2012 was met with silence, with neither she nor Eugenie given a significant role. Undeterred by the snub. Eugenie says the sisters are determined to support Granny and Grandpa in any way we can, because that is what family is for. Freaky fashions are in the past. Shapeless coats. Hideous headwear. Gaudy floral frocks. The sisters have long been subjected to criticism for their choice of clothes, culminating, perhaps, in the outlandish Philip Tracy hat Beatrice swore to William and Kate's wedding in 2011, which was variously compared to a toilet and a pretzel. Both princesses admit the criticism has stung, yet their status and family wealth has afforded them as much sartorial privilege as ridicule. For a start, it meant Beatrice could afford to hire stylist Charlie Anderson, Tatler magazine's former fashion editor, who has also dressed the actresses Emma Watson and Anne Hathaway, in 2011 at a cost of £1,500 a day, sending her image on an upward trajectory. In May she donned a much-lauded custom-made Violet Alberta Ferretti gown after wangling an invitation to the exclusive Met Gala fundraiser in New York, a feat of which most fashion-loving women can only dream. This January, Eugenie garnered widespread praise for the stylish £1,288 black satin dress by British designer Erdem that she wore to announce her engagement. Roman Oprah and moralist chums. From the beautiful and talented to the eye-wateringly wealthy, it appears there are few celebrities the princesses don't have on speed dial. Eugenie's best friend is Harry's ex Cressida Ibanez, it was she who introduced the pair. She is also close to supermodel Cara Delevingne and pop star Ellie Goulding, and describes artist Tracy Amin, whom she met while working in New York, as her guardian angel. Holly Branson, daughter of Sir Richard, regularly accompanies both girls on the London party circuit, as does Sophia Wellesley, granddaughter of the 8th Duke of Wellington and wife of the singer James Blunt. Beatrice has been on holiday with supermodel Carly Clausen Jordan, hung out with presenter Alexa Chung at Coachella Music Festival in California, and, like her sister and mother, befriended the American chat show host Oprah Winfrey. She has also been invited to spend holidays on board the yacht of businessman Roman Abramovich, a man who, with an estimated £9 billion in the bank, makes the Queen look something of a pauper. Only the best for these gym bunnies. The sisters share a laid-back approach to looking good, but it doesn't come cheap. Eugenie uses Charlotte Tilbury mascara, around £25, and Bobby Brown bronzer, £30, and has approached celebrity stylist Ben Skirvine who has worked with Madonna and the actress Keira Knightley, to do her wedding hair. A keep-fit enthusiast, when she is not doing circuit training in the park at 7 a.m., Eugenie works out at the exclusive Grace Belgravia Gym, where annual membership costs £5,500 and the joining fee is £2,000. Beatrice, 
the first royal to complete the London Marathon in 2010, employed pound 65 an hour personal trainer Nadia Fairweather to help her shed 2st with a combination of boxing and squats in the park.